Praise the Lord, everybody. Ran into some technical difficulties here. Have no idea what happened. And uh, we're just trusting that the prayers that you were sending up are the reason that it came back. Uh, and uh, trusting God for that. So glad that you have joined us. We're off to a little bit of a different start here this morning. But so glad that you have joined us for this day of praise and worship, this Palm Sunday celebration at Bethel Apostolic Church. And we are looking forward to what God is going to do. God is going to minister to us, but more importantly today, we're going to minister to Him by giving Him praise and honor and glory. Amen. If you would, maybe just uh, just send us a bunch of, of uh, likes or something there, thumbs up to, to let the people that are watching here know that you're receiving the audio and that everything is working appropriate and uh, for those that text uh, Brother Eric go ahead and do that Brother Seifert and, and Brother Keith maybe and let him know that everything's okay and then we will proceed with our time of worship. I want you to get your Bibles out. We're going to open this service with reading of the word and I encourage you to gather your family around and uh, let's open the word of the Lord and let's read together Psalm number 150. Psalm number 150. Now, as our custom, we do stand for the reading of the word of God, and I encourage you in your location right where you are to go ahead and do that. Stand with us. Let's honor the reading of the word of the Lord. And Let's read it together, beginning at Psalm number 1 of one, uh, the first verse of Psalm 150. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and the heart, heart. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the stringed instrument and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Now in the Psalm here, the Psalmist tells us where we are to praise the Lord. Praise him in his sanctuary. If you are inviting him into your home and building him a, a, a tabernacle of praise right now in your home, you are inviting God. God says to praise him there in the firmament of his power. That's where we are to praise him. What are we to praise him for? We're to praise him for his mighty acts. Has God done anything great for you? Has God done anything great even if it hasn't been for you? Yes, he has. So we're praising him for that and according to his excellent greatness. He's a great God. He's worthy of our praise. And then he tells us how to be praised. And he's basically telling us here, anything that you have to give to God in praise, you can use it to praise. A symbol, a timbrel, a dance, a, a lifting of our voice, a clapping of our hands, a high sounding symbol. And then he tells us who. So we have where, what for, how we're to do it, and then who is to do it. And the Bible says, let every Thing that hath breath, praise the Lord. If you're breathing today, you should be giving God praise. Go ahead and clap your hands unto the Lord, and let's magnify Him. Let's lift Him up. Let's exalt His name together. God, we bless you, and God, we invite you to come and join us in our time of praise. God, we build you a habitation of praise, for you are holy, God. You are righteous, God. You are magnificent and altogether lovely, God. What a worthy Savior you are. You're holy. You're righteous, God. And we praise your holy name. We praise your holy name, Jesus. There's no one like you. There's none beside you. Worship with us now. Sing along with us as we give God praise and honor and glory. Faith. 
are good, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
good God. We worship you, Lord, according to your mighty acts, oh God. We worship you because you're an excellent Savior. You're an excellent God. You're so good, Lord Jesus. That's why we worship you. Hallelujah, because of who you are, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen. Why don't you just lift your hands now as we do in our services when we're together. Lift your hands to the Lord. Let's just worship him for a moment. Holy is our God. Great is the Lord. Lord, you are always with us. You never leave us, oh God. You never forsake us, oh God. You're always beside us. No matter what we're going through, Lord, you're always with us, Jesus. Always with us, oh God. I have this confidence because I've seen the faithfulness of God still inside the storm. Promise of the shore. I've sensed the power of your word. Enough to seek your kingdom first. Beyond the barren place, beyond the ocean waves. When
is beside us, Lord. Going forward, Lord, you got us. Going backward, God, you got us. You're always with us, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to make a way today. Make a way, oh God. Make a way for us today, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Aren't you glad that you know that kind of a God? It is always, always with us. The Bible says that he'll never, ever leave us. He'll never forsake us. Something we can be confident of. Don't always understand the goings. Don't always understand the circumstances. But there's one thing we can understand about God. And that is he's faithful. Not only is he faithful, but he's capable. He's capable in every situation that you find yourself in. God is capable. Amen. Now, I just thought about this a few minutes ago. So, again, uh, God does this to me and kind of puts me into a predicament here. And I just try to follow the prompting of the Holy Ghost as he speaks into my heart and my life. So I'm going to ask you, our church family, others might find this odd, but I don't think our church family will. I'm going to ask you to gather your family around you, wherever you are in the home there. Some of you have it already, but uh, if you have an anointing oil in your home, amen, an oil that you can anoint your family with, we're going to pray. Go to the Lord in prayer for our needs, but I want you to leave, and I want you to go into the kitchen or wherever it is, and if you have olive oil, that's what we use, and gather the oil, and, and I want you to gather your family around you, and I want you as the head, whoever it is, the person as the head of your household, encourage you to do what the Bible says, and that is anoint them with oil. And we're going to pray for sickness in your home. We're going to pray against it. Anything that's there, we're going to believe God to heal it. We're going to pray this oil as a protection upon you, that it represents the power of God and the Spirit of God in our lives and in our midst. And it's just representation, but it's a, it's a token of faith, an act of faith. And, uh, and I'm going to call you to do that. And I want to ask you as men and women, the leaders of your home, let's do this together. Amen. So I'm going to call my family around that's here today. And uh, those that are not, we're going to call them by name and mention them in prayer. And we're just going to anoint one another in oil. And I'm going to ask God to bless and ask God. Brittany, why don't you come on up here? It's okay. We can do without the music right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Husbands, anoint your wives. Anoint your children. Amen. In Jesus' name. Ask Brother Eric, as a minister of the gospel, if he would anoint me now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. And bind together with your family now, if you would. Take them by the hand, and let's pray a prayer now in the name of Jesus. God, we do this in accordance to your word, Lord. Your word is powerful, God. We pray that that anointing, Lord, that Holy Spirit would cover our hearts and our lives and move into our homes right now, God. I pray for each and every one of the members of our family, God. I pray for Zach and I pray for Leah and I pray for Finley and Sage as well, God. While I'm not able to anoint them with oil, I pray over them and Leah's family, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. I pray a covering, Lord, of the anointing of God, that power, Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible says it is the virtue of God. It's that virtue that flowed from your body when that woman with the issue of blood, Lord, that power, that's what we have anointed ourselves as representation of. I pray that that power of the Holy Ghost would fall upon each of us, God, and upon every member of this church and upon everyone that's listening today and watching today, God. Purify us, God. If there's any sickness, if there's any virus, oh God, if there's any disease in the body right now, I pray, Lord, that your virtue would flow from the anointing, Lord, from the head down to the body, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we call upon you to do this thing, God. Anoint us, oh God, and keep us whole in your sight. Cleanse us, oh God, and make right that which is wrong, Lord, not only in the body, but in the spirit now. And we will 
praise you. God, we pray for your blood as a covering upon us. Lord, that in our goings and our comings, it would wash us, Lord, and cleanse us and purify us now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we pray. And we honor you, Lord. And we bless your name, O God. How great you are. How great you are, Lord Jesus. How great you are. Oh, God, how great you are. How great you are. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. I think it's good that we do that, and I think it's good that you continue to do that on a, on a regular basis in your home as you gather for times of prayer. Pray together. Anoint them. Amen. 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 Asking you now to join us for the many needs that are present in our world right now. The coronavirus has gotten our attention, and we focus an awful lot of prayer right there, right now. But there are many other needs as well, some very great needs, and uh, health and uh, finances. And uh, we're just going to pray a covering prayer now over all of them. Ministry that is uh, suffering from this sickness in their homes and their churches and individuals in our community that are not only suffering but are now beginning to pass away as a result of this. And we want to pray and ask God to help Decatur County as well. Not just our church but every church. And not just uh, those that we know but people that we don't know in our community that God would help us so Bow your heart right now and bow your heads and, and say a prayer and ask God to supply that need. Let's, let's earnestly and fervently and passionately right now call upon God in the name of Jesus. Lord, we do this. We do this, O oh God, in accordance to your word, God. We ask you now, God, that you would help us to pray with passion and pray with a burden. God, let us feel your burden right now and intercede on behalf of all those that are sick. All those that are suffering, oh God. All those that are in turmoil, Lord. And even those that are lost right now, Lord. That their hearts would be turned to you. I pray for the healing of the soul, God. So many lives that need to come home to you, I pray for them. So many lives that need to know you like we know you, God. I pray for them. So many, oh God, that are sick right now suffering and many more that are in, in infected oh god i pray a covering and i pray a cleansing right now in the name of jesus and i pray oh god that you would make them whole by the power of your blood lord you took stripes that they might receive healing you took stripes oh god that they might be made whole i ask you to do that each and every one so many we can't even name them right now god in this allotted time but you know them our friends our family, perhaps, our neighbors, their associates, our associates. Oh, God, touch them, we pray. In the name of Jesus, we petition you in your throne room, God. We petition you at your throne. Help, Lord. Help, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. In your name, in your name, in your name, Jesus. And we'll praise you, Lord. We'll praise you. And we will honor you, and we will give you glory in the name of Jesus. Lift your hands unto the Lord. Lift your face towards him. Let his glory and let his might shine upon you now. Let the power of God flow through us, Lord. Let it flow through us, God. In the name of Jesus, minister to every need, Lord. Minister to every need, God. Lord, fill empty hearts. Fill them, Lord. Oh, God, those that are without hope, let them experience hope today, Jesus. Those that don't know you, God, let them encounter you that they might know you right now. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, we praise you and we worship you, God. You're holy, God. You're so holy, God. You're so holy, God. You're so awesome, God. We're standing in your presence, God. You've surrounded us in love. 
You've surrounded us in worship, oh God. You've surrounded us as we've given you glory. We sense your closeness. We sense strength, oh God. In your name, Jesus. In your name, Jesus. In your name, Jesus. In your name, in your name, in your name, in your name. Amen. And let the church say amen. Amen. Let God fill you right Comfort now. Let his presence surround you right now. The In the name of Jesus. Your glory, God, is Holy what Spirit. our hearts long for. To be overcome oh, yes, God. by your presence. your eyes and feel the presence of the Lord. Come on, entertain him for just a moment. Tell you, God can renew strength right now. God can renew the spirit in your life right now. Let him do it in your home. Right now, God. Right now, God. Renew us in your power. Oh, God, fill us full again of your glory and your might, God. You're welcome right here, Jesus. Hallelujah. Feel the atmosphere, Lord. Your glory, God. Overwhelm us. Right now, what we need more than anything is to be overcome by the presence of the Lord. What you need more than anything in your life right now, friend, is to be overcome. We've been overcome with bad news. We listen to it. We indulge in it. There's not a lot good going over out there in the last several weeks. It's overcome us. But what we need right now, what you need in your home right now and in your life and in your situation is to have the Holy Ghost the Holy Spirit, that manifestation of God, let it overcome you in your heart, in your life. In the name of Jesus, overcome us, Lord. Overcome us, Lord. Overcome us, O God. Sweet sweetness of God. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the I am just, um, I am just hard-headed and stubborn enough to 
to not change the way I do church. I'm not going to change the way we do church. And I'm going to work in this time that we are here, time that we are together for our church family to help you receive from God what you need in your moment and in your time. And uh, I don't know how it, I don't know how it, uh, how, how it is on, over the internet and all of that. This is who I am. This is where God has brought me to in my ministry. And so I encourage you, just continue to seek after God. Continue to let God move in your midst and in your home. And as your pastor, I'm going to do my best to facilitate a move of God in your home while we are away. We need that. We need that. And let all the church say amen. 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 I'm going to give you a time and an opportunity right now. I mean, I ask you, uh, first time I've done it publicly, but I ask you to refrain, church, from making a lot of comments during the, uh, during the time of, the, of our worship and during the time of our, our message. And uh, we'll give you opportunity here like we do in church. Now, I'm beginning to find out I think we got a lot of people in church that talk a lot during church. I'm, I'm not for sure. <laughs> I made the, fam- the, the mention to my family that I said, you know, is that what's going on during church when I'm preaching? Somebody stand up on one side of the church and waving to somebody on the other side of the church. I understand all that. I'm making light. But, but I do ask you to just try to uh, reverence what God is doing and, and not allow it to become entertainment, but allow it to become ministry in your life. So we're going to take a moment. We're going to take our offering. If you have your offering, take it out. Let's give it to the Lord. Bless it and, uh, uh, and give it into the kingdom. Put it in that place where you're putting it to keep until you can deliver it or bring it to the house of the Lord and uh, or do it online however it is you're able to continue to support but let's take our offering and bless it and then I want you to take a few minutes as we or at least a moment here as we make a transition to the word of God and ask you to talk to one another say hello to your friends that I've gathered and uh, family that are that are there in the house of God greet the brethren and greet our sisters in the name of the Lord. God, I thank you for your presence that I feel and I know that it's here. I need it, Lord. You know we are in need of it. We need that encouragement, and that's why we come together, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together because there's strength. Even though we're not here in body, there's strength in knowing that we are in one mind right now and one accord having gathered in this fashion and so I ask your blessing upon it I ask you Lord to take the offering that is being given now and multiply it Lord I pray you multiply it in people's lives that they may give more but I also bless and multiply the gift now in the name of Jesus I ask you to do that and we'll give you praise and honor in Jesus name take a moment if you need to take a break and go to the restroom now's the time to do that if you need to get a drink please do that come back and join us for the word of the lord we're excited about this day of celebration on this palm sunday god bless you
eyes in. Shake their hand and you hug them and tell them that you love them. Those that are there with you. And I think that's a wonderful thing for us to do during this time of sharing and greeting others that we also greet those that are around us. Take your Bibles. Let's look at Mark chapter 11. And uh, let's turn to verse number 7 in the word of the Lord today. I pray that you have gathered your Bible with you as you come to hear the word today. Scripture that we probably expected to hear today concerning the triumphal entry of our Lord on that day that he made his final entrance into Jerusalem. Mark chapter 7, Mark chapter 11, verse number 7. And again, join us by standing for the reading of the word of the Lord today, beginning at verse number 7. I'm waiting on my family to all stand for the reading of the word of the Lord. Verse number 7, and they brought the colt to Jesus and cast their garments on him and he sat upon him and spread many and many spread their garments in the way and others cut down branches off the trees and strawed them in the way. And they that went before and they that followed cried saying, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And Jesus entered into Jerusalem. God, I thank you for your word and I thank you, Lord, for what it is brought to us and uh, what it means to us. And I pray now that our eyes, Lord, would be opened as our hearts are open and as our ears, O oh God, are now open to hear it. Open our eyes that we might see what you would speak into us and share with us this day. And we'll give you praise and honor in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, I again want to say thank you to everyone that has joined us today. I found out last night that, that we have, I have family. I have a niece and her family that's been watching us all the way up in uh, the Dakotas and others around no doubt the United States, but in particular to them and my parents and my brothers and sisters are joining us, which has uh, been quite different in my lifetime, being new to this uh, live streaming. So I welcome them as well as all of our friends around our community and around the nation. Palm Sunday, you know that, that road that the disciples found themselves on that first Palm Sunday it was a very familiar road. It, it was the road to Jerusalem. Uh, they had walked it many times before. And they knew that as they reached the town of Bethany that they would soon turn and uh, round the mountain of olives. And there they would see the city of Jerusalem as it was suddenly sprawl out before them. You would see the temple glistening in that afternoon sunlight, and, and you'd see the magnificence of the towering gates that were there. Uh, and while that road was known, and while that road was a loved road, the journey on that first Palm Sunday was completely different. Jesus was coming from Jericho that was about 19 miles away and it was there that he had healed blind Bartimaeus and there that he spoke to uh, Zacchaeus and now it was the time of the Passover and, and now Jews from all over the world were coming and were crowding into Jerusalem to observe the Passover. And when word got out that Jesus was on his way, there was a crowd of people that began to rush out to meet him. And all the crowd that came to meet him began to rejoice as they were, in essence, receiving as though he were a conquering king. 
The Bible tells us that most of the crowd that came, they, they took their coats and they laid them in the roads. And others were going and they were cutting down palm branches from the trees and they were spreading them in the road. And on that Palm Sunday, that first Palm Sunday, as Jesus approached Jerusalem, the Bible says that the crowd was waving prom palm branches. They were throwing their coats in front of him <clears throat> and they were lifting their voice and they were shouting, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. And so a multitude of people were cheering, a multitude of people were praising, a multitude of people were exalting the name of Jesus. That's the way it should be. Can I say that? That's the way it should be when Jesus comes into our midst. That's what we were doing just a few minutes ago when we begin to praise and worship Him. Why were we doing that? Because it's the right thing to do. When Jesus enters our midst, it's the right thing to do to cheer. It's the right thing to do to praise. It's the right thing to do to exalt. I believe there was clapping of hands. Perhaps there was even whistling that was going on. There was a lot of noise. There was dancing because it's the thing that we should do when Jesus is in our midst. But then, then something happened. Within a short span of time, the cheering stopped, the, the praise stopped, the, the worship ceased. All gone, it stopped. Isn't it amazing in, in life how when things are going our way, when, when Jesus does what we want, when Jesus rises to our cause, when, when, when it seems like He's meeting our expectation, isn't it amazing how it's so easy to cheer Him? When everything is good, boy, it's easy to give God praise. It's easy to give Him glory. But what about when He doesn't do things according to our plan? What about when He doesn't do things like we want Him to do? What about when we, 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 we don't understand what is going on in that situation? We recognize that He's with us, but, but we're uncertain of His plan. Things aren't quite like, like we had envisioned them. What about when He doesn't do things the way we planned it? See, the Jews, they, they had desired a king. They had desired a conqueror that would come, someone that would come and set them free from, from the Roman government and the rule over them. But Jesus wasn't that kind of a king. He wasn't the king that they were hoping for. Jesus didn't go and gather troops. He, he didn't lead a revolt. He, he didn't do what they expected. He didn't meet the expectations that they had for him. See, the, the response by Jesus to their crisis was confusing at best. It was confusing. I couldn't understand what was going on and why it was happening the way it was happening. And so, as a result, the cheering stopped. The praises that had just hours before rolled from their lips, from that multitude, their praises fell silent. And within the hour, when it began to draw dark, when the trial became difficult, when fear and confusion entered, when uncertainty became the norm, the cheering stopped, the praises stopped, worship ceased. For, for weeks now, we, we have been, we've been admonishing you concerning the power of prayer. Uh, I've, I've seen it, heard it. Every pulpit that I have, I have visited by way of online services or other aspects, they, they're every pulpit in America, it's, it's, you know, it's kind of worth its, any church that's worth its weight in salt ha, has been presenting to their congregations Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. As a nation, we need to pray. There's no doubt about that. We need to humble ourselves. We've been doing that. We've been admonishing you to do that. We've repented 
America needs to repent. Every church in America needs to repent. Every individual in America needs to repent and humble ourselves before God. We need to seek His face. Turn from our wicked ways. It's not enough just to say, I'm sorry. There's nothing truer than that. And every, every pulpit in America has been proclaiming that. But can I tell you this also? That while prayer is a powerful instrument, can I tell you that praise is also a powerful instrument? Praise is a powerful force against the enemy. And the reason I believe that is because the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. See, praise is a powerful instrument because something happens when we praise God. Things begin to move and, and things begin to shake in our situation. In our lives, it begins to, to change a little bit as, as we begin to praise and worship God. In our spirit, things begin to happen when we begin to praise. Because when you praise Him, God always shows up. When you offer up that sacrifice of praise, when you earnestly and sincerely, just in your prayer, in your petition, it moves God. Can I tell you that your praise does the same thing? And when you, with a heart of love and sincerity, and, and with true appreciation and admiration unto God, when you offer that praise to God, God shows up and it does something about your situation. God shows up and God moves things. Psalm 65 is a very, very awesome little portion of Scripture. And it says in verse number 1, it says, Praise waiteth for thee, O God. In Zion. It's like, God, we're praising you. God, we're lifting you up. And that praise is here. It's here right now. It should be in your home. It should be wherever you are. It should be in your car. It should be in your life. That praise, God, I'm praising you. And when you get here, we're waiting on you. God, but we know that when you show up, something's going to happen. Let me remind you that while prayer is vital... Prayer is so vital. Hear me today. Praise is commanded in the Bible more than prayer is commanded of us. The Bible tells us to praise more than it tells us to pray. Perhaps that's because prayer is most often related in the Bible as us presenting, in the Bible, as us presenting our need to God. We pray and we present our need to God. But praise is when you exalt the virtues of God. And it's, it's through praise and worship that, that we are able to change the center of our focus. Praise unleashes you from yourself. and enables you to get your eyes off of yourself. enables you to get your eyes off of your circumstances. It enables you to get your eyes off of your needs and even your desires. And allows us to put our, our, our eyes upon God. And it's when we put our eyes upon God and we begin to praise and worship Him that He is able to lift us up out of that ash heap. If you haven't learned how to praise by now, I'm going to tell you something, church. You better learn to praise God. Because some of the stuff that we are encountering in our life, you're, you're just going to have to praise your way through it. You're going to have to praise your way out of it. You better learn to praise the Lord. I have spent six years in this pulpit, upon this platform, and in your lives, trying to teach you how to praise and to worship God. Not when your situation is right. Not when your situation is bad. But when God is worthy, and God is always worthy. You, if you haven't learned how to praise God yet, I'm telling you, you better learn how to praise God. Because some things in life, and this may be one of them, that the only way that we're going to get out of it is through our praise. The only way that we can escape the things that we are facing, the stuff that we are enduring, just might be through praise. When Jonah found himself in the belly of the well, do you know what got him out of that well's belly? It wasn't repentance. Repentance was very important. It's very important in our lives. 
It's very necessary. We talked about 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. It's necessary. But then you're going to need, after repentance, you're going to need to get your praise on. Jonah does the right thing in that well's belly. He does the right thing. He repents of his sin. He, he turns his t- attention towards God. But once he does that, he, he then begins to give God praise. And it wasn't until he began to praise God, his God, that that well got sick. Jonah chapter 2, the easy read version says, Jonah prays, I will give sacrifices unto you. I will praise and thank you, God. Salvation only comes from the Lord. That is praise. That is him Praising his God. That's verse 9. And then verse 10 says, Then the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited Joe out of, or Jonah out of his stomach onto dry land. Some things in life we're only going to get out of with our praise. Acts chapter 16. Paul and Silas were in prison, and the Bible says it was at midnight that they prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them, and suddenly there was a great earthquake. Paul Paul and Silas didn't wait until they experienced the breakthrough to praise. They didn't didn't, didn't wait until everything turned good in their their lives to wait to to begin to praise and to thank God. It was amid their difficult circumstances. It was amid their pain and their suffering that they praised God, and they received that breakthrough that they desired in spite of their pain. When things looked the darkest, Paul and Silas chose. It it was a decision that they made to begin to sing praises unto God right there in that prison. It's kind of like a, I think I've said it before, but it's kind of like a a protest praise. It's kind of like they were sitting there and they said, you know, we're just, we're not just going to sit here and take this. We're going to praise God. And God showed up and that jailhouse began to rock and things begin to move when they begin to praise. Hey, I'm going to tell you something. If you're in a situation today, and I think we are, I can tell you that praise can be the cure to get you through your storm. When you can't see your way through a storm, praise gives you vision. Even when I don't see it, this is a song we're singing. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I can't feel it, I don't understand that you're working. You never stop, God. You never stop. That's something to give God praise for. You never stop working. You never stop moving. You're a way maker, God. Even, even when I don't understand what's going on, even when it, 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 it's, it's not what I had in mind, even when it's not the plan that I had, God, you're still working. You're still moving. You're still doing. And when, even when my vision is blurred or when I'm blinded by, by, by the darkness of the night, you're still moving, God. You're still working. When you're in all that situation, there seems to be no way out. Open, just open your mouth and praise the Lord. Just open your mouth and begin to worship Him. Take your focus off of you. Take your focus off of your surrounding. Just take a moment and and praise Him. Just take a moment and give God praise and honor. Open your mouth and praise the Lord. Don't, Don't stop praising Him. Don't stop telling God how great he is. God, you're worthy. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, God, for delivering me. Thank you, God, for my family. God, you're awesome, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for healing me that time. Thank you for providing for me, God. Thank you, Lord. Bless the virtues of God. Lord, you're kind. God, you're gracious. Don't stop. Just begin to sing the praises of God. Don't let your situation stop. The cheering. Don't let your situation stop the praise. Don't let your situation stop the worship of God. You know, we're here today and we're celebrating all across our nation and even our world, we're celebrating the triumphal entry of our Lord into the city of Jerusalem today. That the Palm Sunday praise. Can, can I tell you something? And I don't mean to be disrespectful, and I don't, I don't want to change and alter someone else's sermon. But Palm Sunday praise, it really isn't all that. We come together today because we come together because we're going to go to the house of God and praise Him. 
We're going to gather our families together in this, in this online service, and we're going to praise God. It's kind of pointed and it's kind of purposeful, and everybody does it. We all do it. We rejoice in God. But if it's a Palm Sunday praise, it's, it's really not all of that. Because what we realize about their praise on that first Palm Sunday is that if, if Jesus doesn't meet your expectation, if, if, if you don't like his purpose, if you don't like his plan, if you don't like his terms, then your praise will probably stop. Your worship will wane. Your devotion will become abandonment. And the next thing you know, your praise is stopped. Confusion sets in. Disciples scatter. Scatter. Many join the scoffers. Many become mockers and accusers. They leave. But it wasn't that way for every disciple. It wasn't that way for every disciple. The Bible says that on the night before Jesus was to ride into Jerusalem, just before that that entering into Jerusalem and that account that we read of the triumphal entry, the Bible says that Jesus was in Bethany at the house of Mary. Martha and Lazarus. Lazarus was there. John, John in his writing, he, he, he mentions that. He says, Lazarus was there whom he raised from the dead. Now, don't you think that there was a lot of accolades being offered in that home? Don't you think Lazarus was there who just some time before had been dead for multiple days don't you think that they were sitting around saying Jesus man it was so awesome what you did oh do you remember when he told told us to roll that stone away high five and patting Jesus on the back compliments being thrown all over the room all over the house about what he had done John I believe was very deliberate in putting that in scripture I can just imagine somebody saying, you know, Lord, if, I, if I'm ever sick and I'm dying, oh, I want you to come. Lord, if, I'm, if I die, come, come, come to my graveside, Lord. It will be awesome because you're so good. Praise was being offered. Come to my funeral and raise me, Lord, and focus on what God could do for you and focus upon what God could do for them all over the house, but, but then in comes Mary. The room grew still as she made her way to Jesus. In comes Mary. She stumbled through the tears Imagine that made that. her blind. She felt such pain. Some spoke in anger, heard folks whisper, there's no place here for her kind. Still on she came through the shame flushed her face until at last She poured her love for the master from her box of alabaster. And Mary, she came and she knelt at his feet and she worshiped. In the midst of all the momentary praise, she anoints Jesus with precious oil. She took her praise and, and worship. She took her love and adoration and she, while well, others are patting him on the back and 
cheering and just going along with the crowd, Mary poured her love, her adoration upon her master. She gave lavishly. She, she gave lovingly. There was something that was very intense. It was a very fervent expression of devotion. The Bible tells us it's as, it's as fervent as anywhere in the Bible. She begins to praise and pour that out upon God and anoint His feet. And in total disregard to anyone that was around her, in total disregard to what others might think, her extravagant outpouring of love and devotion, she didn't even think about it. It just, it just flowed out of her. It wasn't, it wasn't about her circumstances. It wasn't about the environment that she found herself in. It wasn't about what was going to happen in the days ahead or what had happened in the past. It was just about a passion and a love for her Master. She didn't have a motive. She didn't have a need that she was presenting. Her worship wasn't manipulation. It was just pure and uninhibited love for Jesus. Jesus commended that. He accepted her gift. And he said, blessed. This is the worship that I am looking for. No matter what others may say about it, no matter what others may look at it and say, and no matter how others may judge you, the most important thing about worship and about praise is that it pleases the Lord. And so she worshiped. And she praised. That's what we're here to do today. That's what we're here to do today. To pour our praise out unto God. I ask you to do that in your home right now. I ask you to take a moment. And give God praise. Because that's what we've come to do. I've come to pour, I've come to pour it out upon you, my God. Praise. Like all from Mary's alabaster pass. Not about what you've done, God. It's about who you are. Don't be angry. It's about who you are. God. If I wash his feet oh. with my tears. Yes, Lord. And I try it's about the love with that we have for you. My Thank you. When he wrapped his loving arms Hallelujah. around me And you, you don't know the cost Of the oil in my alabaster box And I've come, I've come to pour my praise on him like all from Mary's alabaster pie. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We do it today, God. It's not Don't manipulation. Be angry it's not because we have need, Lord. Wash his feet with my it's not necessarily feet. just because of what you've done for us, God. But we understand you, Lord. We understand you, who you are. Hallelujah, Lord. We understand what you've done for us. We're thankful, God. Yes, we are, Lord. We're so thankful. So thankful, God.
Think about it. The road to the road to Jerusalem was filled with praise. I mean, from start to finish, the angels declared it at his birth. They rejoiced. There was praising. Shepherds went and they praised and they worshiped. Wise men came and they praised and worshiped. All the way, Jericho, blind Bartimaeus, the lame, they all praised and they all worshiped. There was so much praise, but there was something different when Mary came in the room. Something changed. She worshiped. And Jesus took note of that worship and that praise. He poured that gift out without motive, without need, without manipulative measures. And now, six days later, when all of Jerusalem had silenced, when everybody had left and mingled into the crowd and most everyone else had lost their praise. Now, six days later, as Jesus is led to his place of crucifixion, nailed to a cross, planted in the ground, suffering and dying. Oh, God. Where do you find Mary? But at the foot of the cross, Jesus was crucified. Mary was still kneeling at his feet. She knelt in Bethany. She knelt at the cross at his feet. I'm certain about the future. You better believe she was, but her worship continued. Hurting. I can't imagine the pain that she was suffering. And yet, she knelt at his feet. Perplexed by shattering of hopes and dreams. And you better believe it. But that pure praise and worship from a heart of love and adoration from the heart of someone that had been forgiven kept her at his feet. It's easy to praise God when he's raising the dead. It's easy to, to heal the lame and have praise. It's easy to praise Him when, when He's opening the blind eyes. and it's easy, it's easy to praise Him when He's doing exactly what our finite minds envision of Him. But what about when your world is being turned upside down? What about when everything that you know and understand is being turned upside down? What about when your dreams are shattered? What about when it seems like nothing else will ever be the same again? What about then? What about when it's dark? I'm telling you, we need an enduring praise in our life. And if you don't know how to praise God, you need to learn how to praise Him with an enduring praise praise and that is a praise that comes not out of manipulation it's not come it does not come out of what I want God to do for me it is a praise that comes from a heart of love and that praise took her from that little home in Bethany all the way through that week of the crucifixion of Christ to a cross but it didn't leave her there because she continued with her enduring praise and that praise brought her on the third day to a grave it was on that third day that she got up and she went to the grave of Jesus and the Bible says that she took with her precious precious spices sweet smelling spices what was she doing she was setting an example of us of praise and worship from the beginning to the end from the start to the finish to take that to anoint again the body of Jesus 
That's the cheering we need in our lives, church. That's the worship that you need. That's what God desires. That's the kind of devotion that He seeks. A praise that cannot be stopped by a virus. A praise that cannot be stopped by a displaced church. A praise that cannot be stopped by hardship, poverty, and even death. It's a praise that is continually in our lips because we love the Lord and we worship Him. Oh, help me do it right now, would you? Help me to do it in enduring praise, God. In the name of Jesus, I will praise you. I will praise you. Oh, God, I will praise you, Lord. I will praise you, Lord. I will praise you, oh God. Let it be an enduring praise, Lord, in the midst of our storm. Let it be an enduring praise, oh God, as we go through our life's trials. That we will not lose, Lord. We will not lose our focus. God, but help us to keep our eyes up on you, Jesus. To lift our hands, Lord. Lift our praise unto you, oh God. Everything to me, Jesus. Come on, wherever you are right now, in your place, in your home, wherever it is that you are, begin to worship God. I'm telling you, God will draw near. When you build him a praise, he will come nigh unto you. He brought hope into her life. At that empty tomb, he brought hope into her life again. Let him restore it. Let him restore it in your life. In the name of Jesus, I know it's dark. I know it's difficult. I know it's out of the norm. And I know our dreams may be being shattered. Our hopes may be being displaced. But I want to tell you, God is worthy of being praised. God desires a praise that's going to carry us through. And if we're going to get through some things in life and come out on the other side better, it's going to be our praise that propels us to that place of victory. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I just want to praise you, Lord. I just want to praise you, oh God. I want to praise you in my darkness. I want to praise you in my grief, oh God. I want to praise you in the hardship, oh God. I want to praise you, Lord, when I feel all alone. I want to praise you, Lord, when that cloud of darkness comes over me. I want to praise you, Lord, in the good times. I want to praise you in the bad times, God. Not because I need anything from you, God, but I want it to be because you're still worthy. You're still worthy, God. You're still worthy, God. You're still worthy, God. God. I exalt you, Lord. I exalt you, Lord. I exalt you, God. Oh, God, come inhabit this praise of your people, God. Fill them, O God, with hope. Let that enduring praise, God, take them to that place where they can encounter you in hope, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You got it under control, God. You've got a plan that you're working. We don't understand it all, God. We don't know how it's all going to end in this life. But we know there's a resurrection coming, Lord. Hallelujah, because you come back to life, Lord. There's a resurrection power in us. And we're looking forward to that. We're looking forward to that. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. We lift praises unto you, God. We sing them unto you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're just going to take a few more minutes. If you are leaving us, thank you for joining us today. I pray that we've ministered to you. Now we're going to minister to the people of God and to our Lord and just sing praises to him for a few minutes. Amen, amen. Lord, you're worthy. You're worthy, oh God. You're worthy, oh God. Family, why don't you come and join us on the platform and let's worship God. Let's worship him. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, your name is great, God.
we praise you. God, we lift you up, Lord. We magnify you in your presence, Lord. We bless you and honor you. pray that you'd re- refill hearts and lives, oh God. Fill them full, Lord, of your power and your strength. Let our witness, God, let our praise as, as this example in your word, let it be a testimony to the world. Let it be preached. Let it be shared with the gospel, Lord. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. We pray your blessing upon your people, God, on every home, on every life. In your name, Jesus. In your name, Jesus. In your name, Jesus. We love you. Our church family, we thank you for joining us. We pray God's blessing upon you and your home. We'll be together again on Tuesday night for prayer. And we'll be together on Wednesday night. And we'll be together on Friday, Good Friday, for our time of uh, Good Friday prayer. And we'll be taking uh, communion on Friday. We'll be giving you instructions about that, but we will be taking communion as a body. It's It's what we do on Good Friday, so we invite you to be thinking and praying about that as we move towards that. And this week and all, it's about a solemn week. It is a week of soul searching. It's a week of repentance. 
It's a week of understanding what Jesus did for us and the price that he paid for us that we might be able to have his spirit in our life, his saving grace. Amen. We're thankful for that. So uh, pray with us, 24-7 prayer, our touch five. We're still doing that. Amen. But let's move forward in God with a heart of praise and worship. Amen. When you don't know what else to do and you don't know what else to say, just lift your voice to the Lord and tell God that you love him. Tell God that he is great. Pour your praise out upon him. And I promise you, he will come and he will change your circumstance. Maybe not the way you want it. Maybe not the way I think it's going to happen. But he will bring peace and joy into your life. Amen. God bless you. We leave you in the name of Jesus.